Okay, folks, here we are, uh, game week 226. Um, a bit of a different format this week. You know, I want to uh, continue to provide value. I think I'm getting some good feedback from people. Um, I think introducing players to target and things like that is is a good approach. Um, but of course, given the nature of this, I'm, I'm recommending them uh, sort of the day of or maybe the day before a game week closes. And that might be too tight of a window to uh, to make some purchases or some trades or things like that um, to scout players properly. And in fact, I might be leading you down a an expensive path where maybe um, folks are, are selling them uh, those players at a premium knowing that they're needed for that week ahead. So I'm actually thinking about trying to maybe be a full week ahead or at least do kind of two game weeks in a row so that um, I, what I'm finding a lot of fun, having a lot of fun with is, is kind of buying and flipping in the limited uh, card space. And, you know, you're not using a ton of money in that space. So uh, it can be kind of fun and you can like look ahead and use some players, use some cards to to hopefully win and uh, to win some game weeks, but then also flip them in a few weeks after they've done well and things like that. That might be my kind of niche, if you will, for, for this type of content. Because there's a lot of other previews out there that probably focus more on just setting your lineup and, and the, the matchups, the, the, the good ones and, and the ones to avoid. So I don't know, I'm, I'm kind of uh, toying with it a little bit, but I'd like to get a little bit further ahead than just what's happening in a span of 24 hours. So um, that's kind of what I'm working on. Uh, as a result, I've, I've stepped away from recommending players uh, just for this week. I'm, I'm, and I'll kind of recalibrate going forward, but I still want to provide something of, of interest for you. Um, so if we look here, uh, nothing too much to learn from last weekend. I mean, really just some high scores, pretty standard. Um, you'll see, we're going to kind of come back to this in a second though. As far as this week, nothing as well kind of jumps out, especially up in the rare category, super rare as well. Um, these are numbers that we tend to see. Uh, obviously, America's is, is really uh, winding down here, so not a lot on offer. Um, but nothing too out of the ordinary here. Um, down in uh, limited, I suppose, uh, again, we've had 1,700 cards being offered up, uh, same number as last weekend. So they're really pumping uh, this number. I mean, you look at the win percentage here compared to uh, up in the rare. Now, obviously, this is your Ethereum bonus, uh, so they don't want to also give out too many cards, I suppose. Um, but down here, they're really trying to uh, kind of normalize or even these ones out and uh, and give out plenty of cards uh, to get people kind of into the system. So um Nothing, nothing too surprising otherwise, but what I wanted to do, somebody asked in a previous video whether I could um, plot these and actually see kind of what the, the points needed for each, uh, each level are at. So, um, so I've done this, I, I kind of toyed around with it a few months ago, but here's kind of a more robust version. So basically I took only the game weeks that, um, like, so not the international breaks and things like that. I sort of excluded those, but really just ones that, that felt like there was a, a significant or a decent number of uh, of matches on offer, and thus the point totals would be pretty um, almost more to an expected number. And so, first off, what we see is that we can just look at the average here. So this is from about mid August, so game week one ninety, um, maybe even early August up until now. And uh, sorry, shooting around here. Um, so you can see what the average points you need to uh, to win that T three card in uh, rare division uh, global all star to get that tier two in that same game week or to move up into the super rare one, you know, 355. So and you can go all the way down. And as you, as you can see, and we've been talking about this, um, global U23 is, is slightly lower than the rest. Um, Americas and Asia, because their leagues are, are winding down, this is probably why it skews a bit lower. But I think if this uh, really tracked more of their full season, you would see these numbers um, a little higher than they are, um, maybe just by a little bit. Um, and then a bit of a just a quick, easy standard deviation. So the bigger the number, the more sort of uh, volatile the numbers are and uh, versus how steady they are. So um, then we can plot that. And, you know, sorry, it might be hard to see on a screen. Uh, you know, you certainly couldn't see these numbers here. Um, the link to this spreadsheet is below. So I'm hoping you can like dive into that and have a look for yourself. Um, hopefully it translates well to a, to a shareable doc um, and, and you can actually um, zoom in and whatnot. But um, I mean, kind of ignore this one. This one's 
uh, special weekly, which of course is going to be pretty volatile. It's been all over the map, really. Um, more what I want to point out here is one thing. First off, Champion Europe tends to rise above the rest. Team tends to be the one that needs the highest score. We, we definitely know that. Um, but the other one for me is just, I mean, we're seeing kind of an overall trend where you sort of needed somewhere in that, you know, high 290, 285 to 3. 20 or something um, at the beginning of summer and just this kind of trend line slowly moving up to where you sort of need um, maybe about a 320 um, or 300, 320, 330 and things like that and above uh, just to win a card. And in fact, if we kind of even just look at this area here, other than this obviously big dip where Asia is, is starting to wind down, um, we can see that it, they're just starting to kind of peak. And I think this is what we've known. A lot of people have noticed that they're just actually giving out less cards overall in the rare divisions right now and super rare. And thus uh, that's inflating the uh, points you need to actually win a card. I mean, 374, that's, that's <laughs> absolutely nuts to win a card. So um, anyways, this, this hopefully is helpful. I, I, I think it's just easier to kind of look at this and maybe um, even scroll through the, uh, the points by game week. Um, and I did as well for the, uh, limited as well so um they kind of kicked off in game week 196 and again i've excluded the sort of international breaks and the really kind of shallow game weeks but um as we can see uh, the average is a lot lower than the rares um but it, as you're going to see in the chart over here it skews upwards so um it started low and it started to move up the deviation naturally is a lot greater as well uh, interestingly america's is actually about the same um pretty close to rares but the rest uh, really are in this like 30 40 and, and stuff like that whereas these are more in the teens so it's about sort of you know twice as volatile if you will um so if we look at this uh again where we go where's the legend down there okay so um again we just see some more volatility and maybe some of them have started to normalize but but we're actually still in this kind of volatile phase where um really the points you need to win a limited card uh, are kind of all over the place. So, um, but overall as a trend line, you know, two fifties, two twenties, kind of this area now up into the very comfortably into the 300, 320, maybe 290 and stuff. So this is kind of moving in that direction as the, uh, the other higher cards are. And, uh, but overall week to week is pretty volatile. It's, you know, whether they're doing that on purpose to kind of stimulate some, uh, some excitement in some weeks or not, or whether they're just trying to figure things out. And as a result, it's not quite as normalized as, uh, as the experience that they have with this. So, um, anyway, it's interesting to kind of play around with, have a look for yourself and see which ones. I mean, I just think any, any chance you can get into these tournaments because they're sort of, um, I mean, you can you can win with a 230 point week, uh, maybe even a 199, things like that. It's it's not too late to sort of have one of those lower scoring game weeks and actually come away with a card in the limited space. That's not going to be forever. Um, it won't be long before these numbers are probably pushing what we see up here. So there you go. I hope that helps. That's what I really spent my week uh, on this time. Again, I'll return next week with a little bit of a different format, but back to recommending players and stuff. Just trying to make this as useful as I can for all of you. There you have it. Uh, enjoy. Best of luck. Have a good weekend. Stay safe, guys. Bye-bye.